I'm back in Constructor because I want to add some more information. And I'm doing that by adding uh, zone-based information to my project. So this is the third iteration of our uh, cost plan. This is the translation of the, the 2D space plan into really a collection of boxes. We'll take that a bit. And when I select uh, one of those zones over here, you can see that it's on a dedicated layer. And that will make it easy for me to recognize the takeoff item once it's in, uh, in vehicle office. Going back to vehicle office now. And um, we'll activate the, um, the manage models again. So again, going back to number three to define my input. And um, so it built up. Uh, I can see again the list of projects that I have available. And everything with zones is part of the, the modeling phase that in which we created that translation of the, the space plan into a zone-based model. Let's take a look at what that looks like in, uh, in Office, activating those models by selecting them. And again, hitting isolate. Uh, so here we are. It's still a very simple model, really a stack of boxes. But we can use it to calculate the, um, the sum of square footages for each space type. And we'll feed that into the estimate. So let's go to the, the plan cost, back to number five. And what I want to do, uh, let's update this a little bit. Create some more space for the, uh, the cost information. So we now have a number that is based on the total square footage of the building. And we want to refine the interior finishes per space type. Uh, so I have uh, predefined line items in my template, as you can see here. I got corridor, and I got my corridor takeoff items associated with it. So again, the highlighting helps me helps me to identify uh, where those zones are in the building, where those rooms are, and that way I can make sure that all the scope for corridor is covered. I'm switching to education now, so that's the line item for education, office, uh, hospitality and laboratory. And again, I can spin the model and take a look at where those spaces are. Really a way to make sure that all the scope is covered. Let's open the quantity data to see how the quantities are used. Enlarging that a bit. And let's take a look at how we can add additional layers, so splitting that up into wall finishes. And we use the uh, lobby perimeter quantity uh, for this one and assign a 10 square foot per square foot uh, consumption to that. And of course, when I select the most detailed level, you can also see the feedback again in the model. creating a little bit more space for the, for the price column. Uh, so these are not yet active. I just added the quantity information. So what I want to do now is make them part of the active price calculation of the project. So I'm using activate assembly again. Now you can see the price is immediately updated. Uh, so I now get the more accurate price. And you can also see that in the 3D model. The C30 interior finishes now uses all the spaces in the model. With that, I can make sure that for interior finishes, all my scope is covered. And so everything is yellow. I'm sure that everything is included. All right. You can see the price on the project level is also updated. And what we want to do next is uh, save a version of, uh, of this cost plan. I created one earlier for the previous status. I can enter a comment here so that it's easier for me to recognize the, uh, the version later. This is a zone-based model. That's how I want to recognize it. And what I did with it is I refined the 
interior finished cost. Save that, and that will be available for my comparison later. Now switched to Revit, where I have a detailed model of the, the, the steel and concrete structure, as you can see here. And let's see, I'm going to rotate that a bit, take a good look. And I want to use that to really refine the, uh, uh, the those sections of my cost plan. So I publish that to Office. And back in Office, I'm going to manage the uh, the model. So back to the input screen, and you can see these are the Revit models that we use for that: the structural location one and two, already active in the project. Let's also filter those out to take a closer look at them. Again, here's a list with both ARCHICAD and Revit models. I hit isolate and select apply for that filter. And that's the model that we want to use to refine the input for some of the sections of our cost line. Before we do that, I want to take a look at the uh, at the takeoff. And that is loading. The takeoff manager provides you with an overview of all the takeoff items that were created upon activation. Uh, so this is what you can modify as needed. Now let me make that a little bit smaller uh, to get a bit of better look on the, uh, on the 3D model. Um, I can uh, I can sort this list of takeoff items, and I coded these in such a way that it's easy for me to find the uh, the, the takeoff items that I need. Uh, so let's take a look at the continuous footings here. Uh, I can select them in the list, and while I select those takeoff items, uh, they're highlighted in the model. Uh, so I can spin the model and again highlight it. It also works in the takeoff manager. Uh, you can see the elements that are part of those takeoff items selected in the takeoff manager. If I want to take a closer look, I can also isolate them. I'm isolating models now and spin that around. And each of the takeoff items contains a set of takeoff quantities. Uh, so if I look at this continuous footing, I, I get all these quantities that were extracted using the, the Vigo Office quantity uh, extraction algorithms. And I can use that, those as input uh, for my cost calculation. So let's go to the cost calculation now to start using those quantities. And as we saw, there's quite a bit of information. Let's see, collapse this first. And I want to activate the quantity data and align this a bit. Uh, there's quite a bit of information for the uh, the foundation structure, so we want to use that in those line items that we have available from the template. So let's start at um, the uh, second slap on grid and, uh, and start using the quantities that we have there. So I'm selecting a line item and you can already see the, the formula that we use there in the formula bar. And those were entered using the formula editor. So that's what I'm opening here. This is the list of takeoff items that I have in the project. And when I scroll to the thickened slab, I get my list of quantities, and you can see which quantity that I use as input for, for this line item. Here's another one, and those are added up and result in the value that you see in the preview. I can repeat that on the next level as well when I'm ready for that, when I have the information, cost for labor, etc., and do that for the other line items. 